Measurements, specifications, and Citizen Kane is the topic of this edition of From My Listening Position. Now, as with most of these videos, there is probably a tenuous connection in your mind between the basic topics I use to define them. And in this case, as with others, it may take a little teasing out for you to understand those connections, but, but bear with me in this regard. When I was a film teacher, and teaching film history, criticism, and production. In the arc of the film history and criticism section, we would pass through the silent film era, discussing a lot of basic concepts of visual storytelling, editing, and the like. And then when we got into sound, we were able then to start to fold in more critical analysis, more deep thinking about what the films might be saying and not just how they're produced. And Citizen Kane is a particularly good film to do this, and not just because it's considered by many to be one of the greatest films ever made, but there's an interesting aspect to it. You have almost, if you will, specifications or a symbol system that I could point out to my students to have them look for with the idea that if we put all of these things together, again, kind of like specifications, we might be able to figure out what the movie was about, what the intent of the movie was, what the movie was trying to say. And in the case of Mrs. and Kane, I would suggest that they look for the use of doors, windows, and reflective surfaces, like, well, windows again, but mirrors and reflective desktops, those kinds of things. And immediately, as you might imagine, and the question that might have come in your own mind, well, well, there's doors, windows, and reflective surfaces in every movie. And I would say to my students who asked that question, well, yeah, but not like in Citizen Kane. And so we'd start the movie and I would, for the first few minutes, point out the kind of dizzying array of doors, windows, lights, reflective surfaces that you're shown at the, within minutes of that film opening. And then I would let them watch it. And at the close of the film, I would ask them what they thought and whether they saw doors, windows, and reflective surfaces. And of course, they would have seen many of them. But then the next question was, why? Why are there all those doors, windows, and reflective surfaces? Well, for those of you who may not know the, the kind of storyline of Citizen Kane, it's all about Charles Foster Kane who dies, and he has these last words that a group of reporters are trying to figure out what they might mean, and they interview a bunch of people to see if they can learn not only what those uh, last words meant, uh, but also to learn a little bit more about this titan of American industry and business. And those last words, they search for, and in the process, you are effectively shown all kinds of doors, windows, reflective surfaces. And what I tell my students is that as you're looking at this movie, it is not unlike, say, a window that limits your access, that limits your ability to see into any space either out or in, a door uh, essentially manages your access. You only can get in or out if the door is unlocked and that is the passageway in which you have to access it. There's no other way in. And, and, and reflective surfaces, while they provide you an image of something, they can often be somewhat distorted. They may not be entirely accurate. And so in the course of the movie, as the journalists encounter all these people that are telling their tale, they realize that they're getting different or managed access to who this man might be. They are limited in what they can learn, limited in what they can see, limited in what they can hear. And that ultimately when they do find out what his last words may have meant or were, or at least the journalists don't, the audience does, you're still not certain that you have all the information you need to be able to make sense of it. In fact, one of the things that takes place then at the end of these screenings is that we have to interpret. I have to help the students to interpret what all of these symbols might mean, these doors, windows, and reflective spaces. And in many cases, this is exactly what it is like when you encounter specifications and measurements in component specification sheets that are provided by manufacturers or in measurement sections that are part of review samples and or reviews. And there are a lot of cases where you have some really great uh, reviewers out there or magazines that have people testing the products in a meaningful way. Guys like Paul Miller at Hi-Fi News, John Atkinson at Stereophile, uh, the guys at Soundstage who take advantage of the National Research Center uh, there in Ottawa, Canada. 
and that they do a good job of not only giving you the specifications, but giving you a hint or two as to what they might mean. But even there, even there, there can be issues about using these specifications as your only guide. Because there are, I know of, gifted engineers, gifted designers, talented engineers and designers who know that they can look at a spec sheet, they know they can look at a design, they can look at measurements, and they can tell you if it's a well-designed product. But in the end, they will admit they cannot tell you what it sounds like. And so with that in mind, even with this idea that you might have some people helping you interpret specifications and measurements as I help to interpret the meaning of the film Citizen Kane for my students, my students still needed to experience that film for themselves to come to their own understanding of it. And much in the same way is you have to experience these things for yourself to come to an understanding that works for you. You can't rely on other people's experience. You can't rely on specifications and measurements. They're useful tools, but they're not the only things that can determine how you put your sound system together for the best performance to suit your needs. And that's the final analysis. Each one of these characters in the movie knew a particular aspect of this man. For him, they were a specific person because of their experience, their own makeup. And the same will be for you. What you like, others may not like. Your understanding of something may not be the understanding of others. And so with that in mind and with the hope that this has resonated with you, make sure you listen. Just listen to all of the wonderful things that are available to us in putting together a sound system. And quite possibly, it might be primary, but it may not. But with that in mind, uh, for more information about Primer Product, go to our website. If you have questions, go to the FAQ. If they're not answered there, submit a help request form and we'll do our best to answer them to the best of our ability as soon as we can. And uh, certainly look for other videos where we'll be talking about the oversimplification of specification and other interesting topics, at least I hope they'll be interesting to you. And, and with that in mind, if you like this video, please click a like and follow our channels to get more of this if it is of interest. Thanks. Thanks.